ever wish you could like control stuff with your mind, not just, you know, thinking about it, but actually making it happen. It's like some street out of those movies, right? Totally. But guess what? That sci-fi dream, it's getting real. We're talking brain computer interfaces, BCIs. And that's exactly where we're diving in today. This deep dive, it's all about how close we are to that future, especially with some wild news coming out of the BCI world. We're talking tech that's moving crazy fast. No kidding. So before we get to the really mind-blowing stuff... We are talking about some seriously mind-blowing stuff. Right. We should probably get everyone on the same page. Level set. I like it. What is a brain-computer interface? Okay, so picture this. A direct connection, a bridge between your brain, which, as you know, controls everything <laughs> you do, and a computer. That's a BCI. It's all about picking up those electrical signals your brain's always buzzing with, decoding what they mean. Translating brain language into computer code. Exactly. Yeah. And then using those signals, that code, to control stuff outside your body. Whoa. Okay, so early research. Way back when, it showed that this whole brain-to-computer thing was even possible. Yep. And things have been, like, exponentially speeding up ever since. Like, hold on to your hats. Which leads us to Neuralink. They've been making headlines, and for good reason. They're really pushing boundaries. Big time. They just did something incredible. Implanted a device into a human brain. Yeah, this is huge. What's so groundbreaking about Neuralink is how they're doing it. They're all about this thing called neuron spike detection. Neuron spikes. Okay, break that down for me. So your brain sells your neurons. They talk to each other using these tiny little electrical impulses. Those are the spikes. Neuralink's implant, it listens in on those. Hold up. They're listening to the conversations happening between our brain cells. That's the idea. That is wild. It's a big deal. Yeah. Because by tuning into these neuron spikes, Neuralink thinks they can turn your thoughts, your intentions, directly into commands. Okay, now you've got me really curious. How does this implant even work? We're talking about something tiny, complicated, going inside the brain. How? Right, so get this. Neuralink uses these super thin threads, almost like microscopic wires. They're flexible, and they're put into the brain with crazy precision. And these threads, they're kicking up those neuron spikes. Exactly. It sounds like brain surgery just went all sci-fi. It's some seriously next-level stuff. But the surgery, that's only part of it. The bigger challenge is figuring out what all those signals, all those neuron spikes actually mean. Like cracking a code, but instead of a secret message, it's how our brains work. Exactly. It's fascinating. So we're talking about tech that can literally listen in on our brains. But what does that even mean for us? Like, what can we actually de-do with this? Okay, buckle up, because the potential applications here, they're mind-blowing. Let's start with healthcare. Right. Mm -hmm. We could be talking about revolutionary treatments for all kinds of conditions. Like what? Give me the good stuff. Imagine someone with paralysis. They could potentially regain control of their limbs using their thoughts through prosthetics. That's incredible. Giving people back mobility, independence, it's huge. Right. Or think about folks with communication impairments. Locked-in syndrome, for example, where they can't speak or move. Oh, wow. Yeah. BCIs could give them a voice again. They could communicate, connect with loved ones all through a computer interface. That's powerful. Like giving someone a new way to interact with the world, a world they thought they might not be a part of anymore. It's about restoring what's been lost. But it goes beyond that too. Imagine chronic pain. What if we could manage that not with meds, but by going straight to the source, the neural signals themselves? Whoa, instead of masking the pain, you're like talking to the brain directly to stop it. Exactly. Or think Parkinson's disease. Tremors, stiffness, all that. What if we could treat that with deep brain stimulation, but personalized, tailored to each person's unique brain activity, thanks to BCI? So medicine becomes incredibly precise, totally customized to you. Exactly. And this is just healthcare. Think about other areas. How about controlling your phone or computer with your mind? Okay, now we're getting into sci-fi territory again. Uh, why not? Write emails, surf the web, all without lifting a finger. The ultimate hands-free experience. Or education. Imagine learning programs that adjust in real time to how your brain's doing. They could boost your focus, help you remember things better. Okay, that'd be amazing for someone like me. Always got a million tabs open in my brain. But <laughs> with all this incredible potential, I have to ask about the downsides. I mean, this is our brains we're talking about. You're right. we got to talk about the ethical stuff. This tech... It can potentially read our thoughts, our intentions. That's exciting, but also kind of scary. What about privacy? What about someone hacking into our brains? Big questions, for sure. How do we make sure this technology is used responsibly? 
How do we protect individual privacy? How do we even define what's okay and what's not okay when it comes to our own minds? Yeah, those aren't easy questions. Nope. And they're questions we need to be asking right now, today, as this technology keeps evolving. I mean, it's a lot, right? Like, we're talking about potentially healing the sick, uh, learning in ways we never thought possible, but also we're wading into some seriously deep waters here. Deep waters is right. I mean, when we start talking about tech that can access our thoughts, our brains, yeah. it makes you question what it even means to be human. Exactly. It's exciting, but man, it's a lot of responsibility. So where do we even start? How do we make sure this tech is used for good? It starts with us, honestly. We've got to be informed. Yeah. Educate ourselves. Learn as much as we can about BCI, the good, the bad, and the potentially ugly. Right, so we can actually participate in these conversations, not just about the science, but the ethics of it all. Exactly, and don't underestimate the power of just, you know, talking about it mm -hmm. with your friends, family, that weird neighbor who's always tinkering with electronics. Okay, maybe not that guy. Right, but seriously, have those conversations. The more we understand each other's views on this, the better we can navigate the challenges that come with this tech. So it's about taking responsibility as a society for how this all plays out. 100%. Yeah. This isn't some predetermined future, right? We get a say in this. Our choices, our actions, they shape how BCI develops. That's actually, that's pretty empowering, knowing we're not just along for the ride. We're in the driver's seat. Right. At least we have the potential to be. It's up to us to steer this thing in the right direction. Wow. Okay, so we've talked about how BCIs work the incredible things they could do from curing diseases to, you know, letting us control stuff with our minds. And we can't forget the ethical questions. Those are huge. Huge. This tech, it's powerful. And with great power, right? Comes great responsibility. You know the drill. Exactly. But seriously, it feels like we've only just scratched the surface here. Like, what's next? Where does BCI go from here? Honestly, who knows? That's the exciting part. But also, a little bit terrifying. Totally. So on that note, we'll leave you with a question to ponder. If you could control something with your mind, anything at all, what would it be? And maybe more importantly, what would you do with that power? Thanks for joining us for this incredible deep dive into the world of BCIs. Until next time, keep those minds curious.